When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Welcome, welcome to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis, where every day I aim to bring you the latest in UFO reports and other fascinating stories from around the globe. Today is Saturday, February 10th, 2018, and on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central, please join me for my talk show, The Outlander, where I answer your emails, take your calls, and interview some intriguing guests. Just go to irnchat.com to chat, interact, and listen live to The Outlander Show. And you can also go to heidihollis.com for more information. Blasting off with some UFO reports. UFO sighting in Lockport, New York. <laughs> this occurred February 2nd, 2018. A red light that got bigger when I asked. There were a bunch of UFOs that night. Mm. And you know, one thing I got to tell you guys. I'm an experiencer as well as a researcher and author on this stuff. I don't doubt a lot of this stuff for a second because reality is stranger than fiction and I'm not kidding. Got to have fun with this stuff, though, so it doesn't drive you nuts. In more detail, this witness states, I was in my room and I saw something bright outside and happened to catch my eye. Upon further inspection, I noticed a red object moving up and down. So I said to it, brighten up for me. And it did. Just what you see in the video. After my phone died, dang it, that sucks. I was blinking at it with my flashlight. I would blink three times, and it would blink back three times. It was pretty interesting. It was the only, oh, I was the only one awake (laughs) at four in the morning, and there were a lot of other UFOs out at that time. It was pretty clear outside. When the sun came up, I lost sight of that object. You know, that happens a lot where people are flashing lights and laser beams, and these UFOs respond. There is a connection between us and them. There really is. They must have a better zoom lens than we do that they could see we're watching. (laughs) Because when we zoom in, we don't get really great images, do we? Mm -mm, Nope. Okay. Next UFO sighting. This occurred in County Mayo, Westport, February 4th, 2018. Experienced sky watcher sees something out of the ordinary. Mm. I'm an experienced sky watcher in the west of Ireland and know very well what aircraft look like. I live in a busy air corridor from the U.S. to Europe. I also know what a satellite and space debris looks like. Tonight, I'd seen a strobe-like flash in the sky to the northwest from the corner of my eye and again several seconds later. I fixed the spot and counted 13 seconds between flashes. A single white strobe-like flash. I initially, if what? I initially, okay, appeared not to be moving, but I soon realized it was moving considerably slower than an aircraft or way slower than a satellite and space debris. Just so you guys know, I do not edit this stuff. I'm just reading it and it could be garbled. It took over an hour to cross the sky and seemed to be at great altitude or in orbit. I checked flight radar 24 and several satellite tracking apps, which had nothing. I didn't expect to see anything on those apps as it was moving relatively slow. I tried to capture a video, but my phone wasn't up to the job. I watched the sky on a nightly basis and soon loads. Oh, I've seen loads of strange stuff, which I could explain, but this was very different, but at all dramatic from anything I have seen. Hmm. All right, this next one is a UFO sighting. Oh boy, let's hope I can pronounce this. Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai. Twice they say that. This occurred January 24, 2018. A hovering object, upper silver, lower gold, with two spinning objects moving around it. Oh, that sounds fantastic. In more detail, this witness states, my daughter and I were walking back to Chiang Mai from Wa Pa Lat Temple. 
on January 24th, 2018. It was around midday. There was a half moon in the sky, and I noticed that there was something in the near sky. It was about a quarter the size of the moon. Through binoculars, it appeared to be in two attached parts, a silver sphere above and a gold distorted sphere below. It was completely stationary, and I thought it must be a hot air balloon or a blimp. Maybe some sort of Buddha figure, considering where we were, and the gold color. However, my daughter thought it was too high for a hot air balloon, and also said that there were two flashing lights near it. Through the binoculars, the flashing lights showed three equally spaced arms were rotating slowly. The rotation causing the flashing as the arms caught the sun. In apparent size, they were half to a quarter of the blimp thing. We watched for a few minutes as these objects circled the blimp thing a couple of times. Then they moved away and disappeared. The blimp thing was still there, stationary. It was doing nothing, so we then stopped looking, carried on walking, and stopped for lunch. We left 30 minutes to an hour later. I looked towards the moon and around the sun, and the object was no longer visible. I would have dismissed the blimp thing as a balloon except for the two circling lights. I have no idea what we had seen. We both had phones, but neither of us thought to try to take a photo. That's okay, because it would have disappeared probably. Some military planes flew over the area. I think it was the day before. Huh? Okay. All right, this is a serious UFO blast from the past here. UFO sighting in Albany, New York. July 10th, 1970, a bunch of us saw a UFO that ended up scaring us. In more detail, we're at a summer camp, Camp High Rock, operated by the YMCA of Bridgeport, Connecticut. We were, after dark, sitting at the edge of the lake. One of the boys, there were three counselors and about 20 to 24 boys, we were talking about what we had done that day. One of the boys borrowed my five Duracell flashlight and started blinking it at some airplanes on an airport some distance away. There were three ranges of hills or mountains between where we were and the airport. After a couple of minutes, the boy said one of the lights was coming in our direction. We saw the light reflected off the first line of mountains. We did not hear anything. The light came over the second and still no sound. We started to get scared when all the animal and insect sounds at night stopped. Oh, all of us headed to the activities building 30 yards behind us as the counselors got to the building with the boys in front of us. The UFO went over us, exclamation point. The next morning, we asked one of the rangers at the camp how high the average trees were tall. The ranger said they were 125 feet tall. The saucer that went over us was wider than the trees were tall. We also called the airport. We pulled our change together <laughs> for the payphone that was at the camp and asked for the control tower at the airport. We got one of the control people. Did you have anything unusual happen during the night? He said that they had an unidentified radar return headed west, west at 600 miles per hour. We said... We saw it, and then we thanked him. Wow, look at this. I keep getting these reports from back in the day that, you know, the airports were a little bit more forthcoming on such things. Yeah, we got something. You guys saw it? Cool. Yeah, thanks, dude. Wonderful. What a good sense of closure and a way to validate. I saw a huge UFO over downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It was at least three, ball, uh, three football fields in length. It was huge. I called the police. I called the airport. None of them saw a thing, but everybody wanted to know what I saw. And I got no sense of closure. There was no way they missed this thing. It, was, it looked like the size of the moon was about to land. The whole body of it glowed an orangish red. And the edges weren't definitive. It kind of looked like it was alive. It was really something else. So, yeah, this is kind of cool. All right. Moving on to the next UFO sighting. This occurred in Cincinnati, Ohio on February 3rd, 
2018, bright red light descended until lost in the trees. In more detail, wife and I were returning from dinner in car, saw a bright red light, more than a point source, certainly not a planet. About 65 degrees in sky ahead and to the right of our direction of travel, seemed to descend quickly and disappeared behind trees in about 30 seconds. Emitted no sounds. When first sighted, I thought it was a light on a tower or power line. My wife thought it was a plane or a copter. There were no other lights visible besides the red light. Because of the area into which the light descended, which was heavily residential, it was unlikely that this was an airplane. No place to land and taxi. And was not likely to be a helicopter because of the absence of landing lights. It could have been a drone, but nothing else comes to mind as to the identity of the light. Entire sighting took less than a minute from first view to loss of sighting. Neither of us experienced any sensations or feelings during the episode. This event took place within a mile of our home. I didn't see any evidence that anyone else observed this light. There was a police car with its warning lights flashing down the street from our home, but this patrol car was pulled into that house's driveway, and I saw no one outside. Since I saw the police car less than a minute after the sighting occurred, it was unlikely that a call from that residence could have so quickly brought a police response. When I looked for the police car 20 minutes later, it was gone. The weather was cloudy with no stars or moon visible, and it was lightly misting or drizzling. Temperature low to mid-30s. I checked the local TV news programs at 11 p.m., but none reported any, any unusual lights. Mm. The next UFO sighting in Cords, or Cordes Lakes, Arizona. This happened February 4, 2018. Six blue and green flashing orbs or spheres in a row off the ground, then disappeared. In more detail, my daughter and I were driving home from Phoenix. We were in the flat area, I think near Cordes Junction. In front of us, we noticed six to eight blue and green pulsing lights, very bright, up ahead and slightly to the right. Above the horizon, but as we got closer, we were still unable to judge the size, height, or distance. Neither of us had ever noticed lights on this section of the road, and we both traveled this road often and many times at around this hour of the morning. We watched for at least a full minute, then realized the lights disappeared. As we drew near to the area where we expected the lights to have been located, we saw that there were no structures of any kind at all. We both got the visual impression that they were lights mounted to a bridge, yet perhaps mounted on the far side, not facing us. They rather reminded me of the flashing lights you see on top of tall suspension bridges or guy wires for aviation hazard warnings. But the lights disappeared without a trace, leaving us both very puzzled. We never could determine any dimensions of any kind due to the fact that we had no clear reference point with which to compare to. The surface was flat, If anyone knows of lights out there in that section of the desert that serve an intentional purpose that we just happen to miss, please enlighten us. (laughs) I like that. All right. The next UFO sighting is from a slight blast from the past. Oh, boy. How can I pronounce this? Tavarovo Belagostiaya Oblast. (laughs) Sounds Russian. This occurred May 20th, 2015. I saw close four objects in sky. They were like humans. Oh, flying people. I've heard of these. I was near my garage in Tavarovo, Rovo, 9. It was building in this area. Not much people. Then I saw like car flesh in sky. I thought some children play. Then I came closer. I saw four objects, sphere in sky about 100 meters over ground. They fly one after each other like playing cats. Because of high speed, there was like trace behind them. In 20 minutes, they disappeared, dissolved in the sky. Hmm. Okay, that's wild. Okay, this next. So UFO sighting in Unadilla, 
Dia? Unadilla? New York. <laughs> this occurred August 13, 2016. Seen two orange yellow lights moving around in the sky, doing something, then went in a big circle. In more detail, it was the Unadilla Pro National August. Okay, 13th, 2016, a black rain cloud suddenly appeared over the mountains, went to take some pictures of it because it looked eerie. Two orange lights were in the sky. The one light was... When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Moving around and did a swooping circle. It was starting to downpour, so I stopped recording. When I viewed the video, this is what was there. This was the beginning. Since then, we have been relentless on showing me more and more. I have so many more evidence, photos, videos. This is just the beginning. <laughs> God is here. I'm not kidding. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, moving on. UFO sighting in Manchester, England. UFO blast from the past. This occurred February 3rd, 1988. Three green jet-like trails traveled faster then Mach 5 from north to southeast while turning. It, I was sitting watching the sky. I had my first UFO sighting a week or so ago, looking for anything out of the ordinary. I saw three green, what looked like jet trails, zip almost right overhead, coming from the north heading south. They were traveling in a triangular formation, middle light at the front. They traveled at what must have been over Mach 5 and were banking southeast. I believe that they were using cloud cover to move undetected. And when there's a break in the clouds, that's when you're most likely to spot them. This is the second UFO sighting I've had within a month. And I now know most of the videos on the net are just nothing like the truth. When you see it for yourself, they're fast, they're obvious. There's no mistaking it. Either I'm hallucinating or I saw two separate events, both clear as day. That means we're not alone or the army has some new kind of propulsion technology. I am floored. I'm an agnostic atheist. I'm not stupid enough to not realize it may have been some kind of madness I'm experiencing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny. But with these two sightings being the only times I have ever had visual anomalies, I know it was real. I'm scared. P.S. Don't give us drop down for color, etc. Huh? Because it doesn't give us enough freedom to accurately describe what we saw. For example, the height drop down, it moved. It was exactly at cloud level. You don't have an option for that. Hmm. Well, see, there goes an agnostic atheist who's scared because they saw something out of the ordinary. Mm hmm. I understand. All right. Next UFO sighting occurred in, oh, what a name, Snoqualmie Pass, Washington. January 15, 2018. A dark, super long needle like UFO looked miles long, was dark during day, invisible and left smoke trails. Video recorded. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'd speculate it's a new advanced defense, defense technology. My daughter described it later as a super long black rocket. We both agreed a several mile long rocket would be impossible. And since we literally only saw black and dual smoke trails, it's probably a jet or rocket with the newer skin that absorbs 100% of light, thereby making it invisible. I suspect the technology we saw would make it impossible to target a vehicle with the skin if the propulsion was miles long. 
The video needs to be zoomed in to witness the enormous length of the UFO. How often times do I read of these craft that seem to be absent of light? You know what I mean? We often see that. So anyways, I'm going to click on over and see if I can spot the video or the photos. Oh, there are photos. Okay, I'm, I'm revealing right now. We're going to do this as it is. Mm, oh. Oh, wow. Well, isn't that something? You know, I have heard of, and, and I've seen something kind of similar, but not this striking. Kind of similar, uh, where you see like almost a shadow of the chemtrail ahead of the aircraft that's making the chemtrail. And there's like a black line. I, I think I got a video of that actually um, myself. I think that's what I did a video of. Yeah, it's really freaky to, just to see, but um, people think that it is a kind of a chemtrail phenomena sort of thing. So pretty wild. That was a that was a cool one. You guys got to check that out. Click on over on the website and you'll be able to see it at ufoheadlinenews.com for today's date. All right. We are going to move forward to a paranormal point of a story. And we'll see where it takes us, shall we? All right. Here we go. This one is called The Family Ghost. <laughs> Keeping it in the family. All right. My experience began when I was seven years old. My family had just moved into my grandma's house two years after we lost my uncle in a tragic accident. I respected my grandma, but she was scary. <laughs> and her house always had this eerie feeling when alone. I was not allowed to have my own room, so my little brother and I slept in the loft on a couch. It, I, it was about 10 at night. Everyone in the house was asleep except me, as I often have trouble going to sleep. We had this lamp in the corner of the loft, so the room would never be dark. I heard a noise down the hall, as if someone was walking on the hardwood floor. I look, thinking it's probably my grandma about to nag at me, but nothing is there. So I ignore the sound and close my eyes, trying to go to sleep when I hear it again. I look, and this time I see a shadowy figure at the end of the hall in front of my grandparents' bedroom door. I was scared. It began to move slowly towards me. I turned around and put my blanket over my face and tried to go to sleep. I awoke the next morning and everything seemed normal. A year passed and it was the middle of October. It was around 7 o'clock and my grandparents were in the living room watching soccer and I was in the kitchen pouring myself something to drink. When then suddenly I hear what sounded like someone, a man, take a deep breath in and then out. Like that type of breath you make when you are annoyed or tired. It sounded like my dad. My parents were in their room, so I run to them explaining what had just happened. And my dad told me that it was my uncle's three-year anniversary of his death. We were all a little uneasy that night. A few months down the road, and I finally had a bed in the loft. It was a school night, so I had to wake up early. I went to sleep that night feeling like some, somebody was watching me. When I woke up, I noticed something on my left forearm. It looked like someone had grabbed me very hard and left a bruise of their hand on me, particularly their fingers, and it was much bigger than my little hands. When I touched it, it felt like a bruise, painful. I was scared. I ran to my mom and showed her. And she was lost for words. She told me that I shouldn't be afraid of the unknown, especially since it is family. <laughs> My parents are strong believers of the paranormal and unknown, and they were intrigued by my experiences. Oh, I, I, I bet they were <laughs> at your expense. My goodness, that's horrifying. They both believe that this entity was my uncle, whose spirit still lives at home. To calm me down, my mom told me one of her experiences at my grandma's house. My parents were in the living room with my dad's oldest brother watching TV and just sitting around laughing when my uncle tells a joke and they all start to laugh. Then they stop all of a sudden because they heard someone else laughing too. <laughs> they stayed quiet, just looking at one another as if to ask, did you hear that too? 
My mom told me it was my deceased uncle's laughter. My dad said that when he heard the laughter, he felt someone or something put their hand on his shoulder in a comforting way. They felt comforted at that moment. I felt instantly better. Years went by and I began having off dreams. I remember there was one where I saw a woman with pale white skin and long brown hair wearing a brown dress looking at me from down the hall at my grandparents' door. She did not have a face, but I knew who it was. It was my aunt who died when she was just 17, and we had a picture of her wearing the dress and showing her long brown hair. She waved at me, and I woke up. I remember always hearing voices or strange noises in that house. The ones that stood out the most were the ones of my relatives, like hearing my mom call me when she wasn't even home or breathing. I will never stay a night at that house again. Finally, we moved out when I was 12 to our own house, where everyone has their own room. It felt cozy, and I loved that house. A year or so in that house went well, and my cousin was living with us. One day, everyone was out except for me and her. She was doing her makeup in the bathroom, and I was washing dishes. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a little boy with black hair and a white shirt run from the hall to the living room. Surprised, since nobody's home, I look and see nothing but our fish tank. I looked around the house, but it's just me and my cousin. It was strange, but I wasn't scared. A day or so later, I was looking through the family photos for a project when I stumbled upon an old photo of my dad on his birthday with my uncles. Not knowing who was who, I asked my mother, and she told me who they were And the last one. A boy with black hair, wearing a white shirt, was my uncle when he was five years old. I told my mom that's who I saw that day. It was my uncle when he was young. I felt a little excited, but I always questioned why it would be me he would come to. I had a dream that night. I was back at my grandma's house, and I was in her backyard. I saw my uncle smiling and laughing with my dad, and he looked at me and smiled and gave me a hug. I was crying and was telling him how much I missed him. I looked at a clock we had on the wall in our backyard, and the time read 2.02. I woke up. I was in a cold sweat and looked at my alarm, and the time read 2.02. I began to sob softly and fell back asleep. We moved out of that house, and nothing has ever happened since. I was told countless stories of my uncle and what he believed in. He believed in the paranormal and makes me feel safe when remembering these experiences. I have lost many family, family members since, but nothing new has happened. Don't be afraid if something out of the ordinary happens to you. It could be just your deceased relatives showing you they are still around. Thank you for listening. Yeah, just, yeah, mm -hmm, okay. As long as they're family, huh? <laughs> Hope they're good people. Spirits versus ghosts. Spirits visit, say hello. Ghosts, you may not know them and they may haunt you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, anyways, I have to tell you guys, thank you so much for listening to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Be sure to check out UFOHeadlineNews.com every single day and Tune into my other two weekly shows, The Outlander on Fridays and The Kevin Cook Show. I co-host on Tuesdays. Both shows are at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. And also check out my paranormal comic strip, The Outlanders, at theoutlanderscomic.com. Direct links to everything can be found on my main site, HeidiHollis.com, or here on InceptionRadioNetwork.com. And remember, if you've experienced something out of the ordinary and want some level-headed advice, or if you've seen a UFO and want to share, feel free to write me at UHN at InceptionRadioNetwork.com. Remember always to keep an open mind so you can stay informed and inspired.